These ladies, and I'm a WNBA fan. It's been good they season. Couldn't, they cannot have fucked this Caitlin Clark thing up any worse. Charles Barkley hasn't been shy of showing his support for Caitlin Clark, especially with some of the negative treatment she might be receiving from fans and even pundits. One of such is former guard Cheryl Swoops. And recently, Barkley dropped a bombshell asking for the former WNBA star to be fired by the league. But why? And why made Barkley so tied up that he'd be requesting such? If you got people in a room, <laughs> yeah, it, like, if you got a bunch of dudes in a room and says, let's fuck up the WNBA, we couldn't have came up a master plan <laughs> what these women have done Swoops have been straight up taking shots at the number one pick in the WNBA and Barkley wasn't having any of it, saying that she and a bunch of others are forming a master plan to damage the league, which has gained popularity since Clark came in. This girl is incredible. What she did in college for women's basketball, what she's doing in the WNBA. She is turned the fever were one and eight. They're, they have a winning record now. But the, the number of attention, eyeballs. She's bought the college and the pros. And for these women to have this petty jealousness, you say to yourself, damn, what is going on here? And well, you got accused of that stuff too with the older players being resentful of the new generation. It's, well, it's kind of part of the basketball process. Yeah, Everybody but, thinks their generation's the best. No, no. Anytime we say something about guys, it ain't the old get off my lawn guy. Yeah. But the, the stuff toward her is petty and jealous. When you look at how things have turned out during this first season, you can't help but agree with Barkley. This is a league that just got attention like never before. And they need to ensure that any division doesn't spoil that. On one side of the divide, you have veterans and legends like Swoops who doubts Clark and thinks she's overhyped. And on the other side is Clark, who is just playing her game. Now the WNBA needs to act fast or risk losing all the fans, deals, TV rights, and sponsorship that Clark has brought into the league. Saying that Clark is responsible for all the attention now is a bit far-fetched, but you can't deny the fact that she's one of the main reasons for that. And despite all this noise, the Indiana Fever superstar just keeps her head down and plays the game. Uh, and the thing I love about her, she does, she never says a word. And now, when I watch her, two things I like. She's playing much faster. Yeah. Much faster. She was playing too slow the first half of the season. She, she I think she was tired. I think she was banged well, up from well, the college all, season. They, they didn't even give her the, 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 the understanding, like, you girls been worried for the WNBA season. Y'all been working out on the no -strip. She came straight out of college. You had to go right to the WNBA like two weeks later. So they didn't even factor them. But I think she's I learned one. Clark has been a revaluation for the fever this season. Coming into a side that hasn't made the playoffs in seven years, she has completely turned their fortunes around, averaging over 19 points per game and dropping a Rookie of the Year worthy performance to lead Indiana to the playoffs. When I watched her play the last month, I think she's learning to play much faster because I think she's learning to trust those girls more. Because you know, when she's in college, she's not passing to a bunch of great players. Now you can see when she plays, she's playing a lot without the ball. She reminds me a lot of Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd's the best I've ever seen with playing without the basketball. Clark isn't just one of those rookies that just put up stats for the numbers. She is making an instant impact in the WNBA, winning games and making Indiana one of the good teams in the league and being miles ahead of other rookies. You had to go right to the WNBA like two weeks later. So they didn't even factor them. But I think she's I learned one. When I watched her play the last month, I think she's learning to play much faster because I think she's learning to trust those girls more. Because you know, when she's in college, she's not passing to a bunch of great players. Now you can see when she plays, she's playing a lot without the ball. She reminds me a lot of Jason Kidd. Take the most recent game against the Dallas Wings. Clark didn't just play well, but exploded for a career high 35 points on 45.5% shooting beating her previous high 31 points against the Angel Reese-led Chicago Sky. It's not just Clark dominating, she is changing things. Venues are getting sold out, and the WNBA is seeing TV ratings like never before. 
This is why Charles Barkley couldn't understand why the ladies were so jealous of Clark. Barkley is coming from the point of the other ladies being nervous because Clark can do most things better pick and roll, passing, speed, and of course three-point shooting. She has already broken the record for most threes by a rookie in WNBA history. Yeah. I played with Jason Kidd one time in an All-Star game. He says, Chuck, you know you should be getting like six to eight points a game more, right? That's what are you talking about? He says, I'm going to pick it ahead to you. Yeah. He says, your point guards wait and give you the ball too late. If I give you the ball full speed ahead instead of waiting for you to finish, you get another eight to 10 points a game. So maybe everyone in the league doesn't want to see one person take all the spotlight. She's starting to see now, if I play faster and give it to them sooner, so that tells me she's really smart. But these ladies who I love and respect their game, they couldn't have fucked this thing up any worse. Because we have talked, and talking about Asia, Asia Will's the best woman player in the world right now. She's incredible. Connecticut Sun's having a great year. The Memphis, uh, Minnesota Lynx is having a great year. But there's been so much negativity. And a lot of it is just petty jealousness. And I love the way she just, and I'll tell you what really good happened to her, not making the Olympic team. But instead of all this negativity, the WNBA players should look at the hype towards Clark in terms of the fact that the league is changing and they should up their game and avoid side talks like in the case of Cheryl Swoops. But despite the attendance and viewership records, there seems to be some haterade in the league in regards to Clark starting with WNBA legend Cheryl Swoops herself. She recently spoke on her podcast, Queens of the Court, and didn't mention the rookie when speaking of Indiana's rise in the standings. Here's what Cheryl Swoops had to say. Look at this quote here. I think the Olympic break really helped Indiana. I'm going to shout out to Lexi Hull. I'm a big Lexi Hull fan. Lexi Hull shot the leather off the ball in their game against Seattle. Kelsey Mitchell is just stroking. She's just shooting the basketball. Aaliyah Boston, almost a triple-double. If Indiana continues to play the way they're playing like this, they too are going to move up in the standings, end quote. So no, 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 Caitlin Clark. Cheryl Swoops. No, 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 Caitlin Clark. No, Caitlin Clark. Respectfully, Cheryl Swoops, you have any idea how that makes you look? You have any idea how that serves to stain any kind of critique of Caitlin Clark because that gives fodder to those who believe she's being hated on and ostracized to some degree? Do you realize that Cheryl Swoops, you're insane to do that? Let me tell you why you're insane to do that. Because Cheryl Swoops, you're one of the greatest players ever in the history of basketball, that's why. See, you won a championship in college at Texas Tech. You won three Olympic gold medals. You won four WNBA championships. You know basketball. You know basketball better than me. You know basketball than any of the pundits. You know basketball better than most of the men that play basketball. There is no way in hell you just accidentally left Caitlin Clark's name out of that soliloquy that you dropped about the Indiana fever. Stop it. You know that. Stop it. Swoops has always not been a big star of Caitlin Clark. I mean, right from her college days. Early this year, she said Clark was in her fifth year, so she couldn't be compared to players who achieved some of her scoring records in four years. No. So if, if Kelsey Plum set that record in four years, mm -hmm. well, Caitlin should have broke that record in four years. But because there's a COVID year, then there's another year. You know what I mean? So she's already had an extra year to break that record. So is it truly a broken record? Swoops on the surface may have a point. However, there remains one or a few fundamental flaws in her argument. Yeah, that'll go in the record books as Caitlin Clark is the all time, whatever it is. I don't even know what the number is, but that's the way it'll be. And, and I don't think it should be. And, and and the sad part is that record would never be broken because no one. There's never been another COVID year. Well, COVID year. Well, COVID we not, there's right? never going to be a, probably another five or six years you can play in college sports, yeah. right? And that's the that's <clears throat> the thing about it, right? Like 
it should be a whole separate entity. Yeah, and it's not to take anything away from what she's done, but if you're talking about breaking records, then this is... If this player did it in this amount of time, then you should do it in that same amount of time. So that's my thought on that. He, even though she later admitted it was a mistake, it wasn't the first time. Last college season, Clark set a new benchmark by dropping 191 points in the women's NCAA tournament over six games, breaking the previous record of Eng, which Swoops had held since 993. But Swoops said that Clark broke the record in six games, and she set the record in five games. All this coming from a legend of the WNBA and a figure who's supposed to promote the league is totally absurd and that is why the likes of Barkley and a host of others are calling for the league to ensure it doesn't escalate. Cheryl Swoops won't let anything, including facts, get in the way of her vitriol toward Caitlin Clark and Nancy Lieberman will not tolerate this slander. I'm a Nancy Lieberman fan. I met her. I liked her. Thought she was pretty cool. Here's what Nancy Lieberman had to say. That said, you know, Caitlin was, you know, 25 years old. She was, uh, however, 24 years old. She was a 50-year senior. Right. She was taking 40 shots a game. Her records were illegitimate. And I, I got off the treadmill and I called her as a friend. And I said, you know, you can say whatever you want. You can have your own opinion about anybody. But you do have to get the statistics right. I mean, facts matter. And if you just get ahead of this and just say, hey, I made a mistake on my numbers... Then this thing is over and everybody respects you for your opinion. And, you know, you might like Boston. I might like the Yankees. You know, it's okay to have difference of opinions. Well, she, she got upset with me on the phone. And I was like, Cheryl, you know, I'm not doing anything to hurt you. I'm just sharing. We're, we're talking. And so our relationship it, it pretty much is not happening at this point. I tried to talk to her at the Final Four. Right. She didn't want to talk to me. Uh, my life's going to be good or great with or without Cheryl Swoops in my life. I'd rather have her in it. Yeah, there you go. I mean, that's pretty, I don't know, simple, basic human response by Nancy Lieberman. That does not seem to be out of the ordinary. No, it really doesn't. I mean, here's what Cheryl Swoops responded. What are you doing here? Uh, now, here you go. What does that mean? Now, here you go. I get what you trying to do with your boy, Stephen A. Smith, but it ain't working. You know good and well what happened. And ditto. My life is good as well without you too. And him. You want to go there. Well, the WNBA and Nancy Lieberman think there's some case to all these concerns and took swoops off the broadcast for the Indiana Fevers game against the Dallas Wings. Even if they didn't say it, it became clear that the league is taking action and that they don't trust one of their legends to talk about his brightest star. You know, I've known Cheryl since she was in college. I, I helped do her shoe deal with Nike in 1993, took her to her first SBs. Uh, I, I've known Cheryl, I've coached her, have a lot of respect for her. The I, I called her when Caitlin was still playing at Iowa and she had just broken Maravich's record. And it was all over the place, as you and I have uh, discussed, that you know, there was this quote by Cheryl that said, you know, Caitlin was, you know, 25 years old. She was, uh, however, 24 years old. She was a 50 year senior. Right. She was taking 40 shots a game. Her records were illegitimate. And I, I got off the treadmill and I called her as a friend. And I said, you know, you can say whatever you want. You can have your own opinion about anybody, but you do have to get the statistics right. I mean, facts matter. And if you just get ahead of this and just say, hey, I made a mistake on my numbers, then this thing is over and everybody respects you for your opinion. And, you know, you might like Boston. I might like the Yankees. You know, it's OK to have difference of opinions. Well, she she got upset with me on the phone and I was like, Cheryl, you know, I'm not doing anything to hurt you. I'm just sharing. We're, we're talking. And so our relationship it, it pretty much it is not happening at this point. I tried to talk to her at the Final Four. Right. She didn't want to talk to me. Uh, my life's going to be good or great with or without Cheryl Swoops in my life. I'd rather have her in it. But come to think of it, why would Swoops, a three-time MVP, act that way towards Clark? Well, Barkley seems to think that it's all jealousy and pettiness, as they all feel threatened by Clark breaking all this record. You women out there... 
No pity, man. Hey, LeBron, you 100% right on these girls hating on Caitlin Clark. Y'all petty, girls. <laughs> I expect men to be petty because we're the most insecure group in the world. Oh, you are. Y'all should be thinking that girl for getting y'all ass private charters, all the money and visibility she bring into the WNBA. Don't be petty like dudes. Listen, what she's accomplished, give her her flowers. Stop being petty, all you women out there. She got y'all ass charters. She bringing all y'all this money to the table, but y'all being petty like dudes. LeBron, you are 100% right. Y'all girls, stop being petty. Kayla Clark, thank you for bringing all that money and shine to the WNBA. That's what they're doing. They can dress it up any kind of way they want, but they're trying desperately to look like white women. And why do I bring this up? Because when I talk about bigotry over business, the bigotry and the hostility stems from these women hate themselves and hate that they're not white women. Why else would you dress as a white woman? Why else would you put on some cheap wig, some horse's hair over the top of your head to look like a white woman and you wonder why they did this to Caitlin Clark? But should they be threatened? There's no denying the fact that Clark is on her way to breaking almost all possible records at this rate. So maybe they don't want just one name to be up there as the number one. For Clark, as Barkley pointed out, it has been impressive the way she has handled everything. But the league needs to do something to stop all this negative talk towards players. It's okay to criticize players now and then, but when it crosses over to hate, especially from a legend, who many of these young players look up to, it speaks volumes. Certain people, they're just polarizing. Yeah. They're gonna be people, certain level, they're gonna be a number of people that love them, and they're gonna generate a certain level of hate, yeah. a vitriol. Always. But you look at the jersey sales, you look at the attendance, you look at the eyes, they're actually watching the game. Yeah. Everything is up. You, you'd be foolish to think that there's not a correlation. Yeah. And it's okay. I don't care. Ocho, as long as I'm eating, there's enough food for everybody. Always. Barkley sometime back once said that the league should do their best to keep hold of a talent like Clark or risk losing what they have built so far. While all the talks are happening outside the court, it'll be interesting to see how Clark will play in her first postseason. Everyone can't deny that the rookie has been so good this season that the rookie of the year is already in the bag and there's also a possible MVP conversation. But Angel Reese is no longer rookie of the year potential winner. That's over. It's going to Caitlin Clark. Let's get that out the way. Did you know that Caitlin Clark is also in a conversation for league MVP? Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? I tried to tell y'all. I tried to tell y'all. You understand what I'm saying? We got the babyface assassin in men's basketball with Steph Curry. They might say that about her before all is said and done because she pulls up from the parking lot as well. Okay, this is what Caitlin Clark brings to the table. 